From the capital of Wyoming, this is News Channel 5 News at 10. A teen from Cheyenne is dead after a tragic rollover last night. Good evening, I'm Riley D. Good. Thanks for joining us. Teddy Weekly, just 18 years old, was killed in a crash south of Glendo. Weekly was in a pickup driving north on I-25 around 5:30 with two other teens from Cheyenne when the driver lost control on icy roads. The pickup went down a steep embankment, rolling several times. Though Teddy was wearing his seatbelt, he was partially ejected and pronounced dead on scene. According to the Wyoming Highway Patrol, the other two were taken to Platte County Memorial Hospital in Wheatland where they were treated and released. All three in the vehicle are a part of the Wyoming State FFA Livestock Judging Team and according to the Casper Community College website, the accident happened as they were driving back from one of their practices in Torrington. A Cheyenne man involved in a crash last week has died. 26-year-old Robert Neal was driving in the 500 block of West 5th Street when his Subaru hit a parked car. That was on the 15th, which was Friday. He was taken to CRMC but died last night from those injuries. Cheyenne PD continued to investigate this crash. Governor Matt Mead has ordered an investigation of the Wyoming Department of Education for several months. Employees have expressed some concerns with this agency, so the governor has put together a team to talk with these employees. Leading the discussion, Kathy McPherson, a longtime Wyoming attorney. They're going to dive into issues in the agency's budget, HR department, as well as the day-to-day -day operations. And sticking with the troubles of the Education Department, lawyers representing the state of Wyoming say it was perfectly legal to remove school superintendent Cindy Hill as head of the department. Hill disagrees and has filed a lawsuit claiming it's unconstitutional. Now the courts will have to make that final decision starting with a hearing on March 14th. The man who owns Developmental Resource Center here in Cheyenne is in some hot water. 32-year-old Ted Atticale of Cheyenne was found guilty on multiple Medicaid fraud charges. He's accused of billing for higher paying services than he provided and for receiving payment for services he did not provide when family members were away from the center. There were 16 total counts, 15 of those felony counts, and he's going to pay for it. Atticale faces 150 years in prison and a fine of up to $150,000. This man's wanted out of Weld County, Colorado for possession of a controlled substance. Charles Hunnell has family right here in Cheyenne and Wyoming law enforcement believe he has been in the area in the past few months. If you see him, they ask you to call Laramie County Sheriff's Department 633-4732. It's an honor reserved for the most exceptional acts of bravery undergone in the line of duty. The Congressional Badge of Bravery was given to the family of the late Brian Gross, a Converse County Sheriff's Deputy who gave his life to save a teenage girl from drowning in the North Platte River during the summer of 2011. It means a lot. It's, it's, it's awesome to know that Brian is still being remembered and that he's still being honored for you know, the actions that, um, that took his life. But, um, you know, this, this honor is something I think that he would be most uh, proud of. Wow, well, Deputy Gross's heroic act was recognized by United States Attorney General Eric Holder. Wyoming's top political figures were all on hand today, including Senator Mike Enzi, who presented Amy Gross with her husband's badge. I was pleased to be able to present her with the Congressional Medal of Bravery for what her husband did. I hope that would heal a little bit of the wound, fill a little bit of the hole, but serve forever as an example of what one man can do that makes a difference. Absolutely. Well, Chris always talks about the warm before the storm, and that definitely was what today was. Let's send it over to him outside on the weather deck. And Chris, it was a chilly day today, but tomorrow is going to get a little bit worse. A little cooler indeed, Riley, and we're also looking at... Now, we heard from Senator Enzi last night on this looming sequester. Tonight, we hear from Representative Lummis and, Re and Senator Barrasso, both with similar concerns. So we want to make sure that we're still uh, not interfering with Deputy Warren's readiness. We also want to make sure that uh, our intelligence overseas is not impaired. We want to make sure there are air traffic controllers. So if you get on a plane in Cheyenne or Casper, Warland or Riverton, that uh, you can take off. So these are the kinds of everyday uh, things that we want to make sure are not interrupted. I believe on March 1st, the uh, uh, spending cuts will go through. Uh, I think there are better ways to do it 
but we're not going to substitute spending cuts for a tax increase which is what the president's pushing for i continue to have lots of concerns for future success of f e warren air force base which i believe is critical to our national security chuck hagel though who's been nominated to be secretary of defense i oppose his nomination you know he's written a book where he doesn't like the ice icbms so uh... i think he's the bigger threat to f e warren than the sequester Erskine Bowles and former Wyoming Senator Alan Simpson outlined their bipartisan plan for federal budget cuts today at the Politico Playbook Breakfast in Washington. There's no business in the country that makes its uh, cuts across the board. You go in there and you try to surgically cut those things that have the least adverse effect on productivity. Second, they're cutting those areas where we actually need to invest education, infrastructure, research, and third, they don't make any cuts in those things that are growing faster than the economy. That's stupid, stupid, stupid. Simpson and Bulls are proposing a plan to cut the country's debt by $2.4 trillion over the next decade. Wyoming may be considered one of the most conservative states, but none of its delegates made the list of most conservative in Congress. Now, the list was released by the National Journal, topping the charts, one of the most controversial Senate candidates of the year, Republican Todd Aiken of Missouri. Legislative reports brought to you by the WEA and the Petroleum Association of Wyoming. Some high-profile bills still lurking out there, like the Wyoming Lottery Bill. For more, let's head out to Robert G. Haw with our legislative wrap. The lottery bill is scheduled third for debate in the Senate Wednesday on Committee of the Whole. It's House Bill 77. If you're following it, it could come up late morning or early afternoon. House Bill 77 provides for a state lottery and allows Wyoming to join the... I'm Robert G. Haw reporting from the state capitol. Back to you. And we'll have more on those bills, of course, tomorrow. It's been dubbed the Beam of Hope, and it will be the final steel beam placed in Cheyenne Regional Medical Center's new cancer center. Community members were invited to come out and sign this beam today. Many people took the opportunity to remember those loved ones who lost their bat battle to cancer and others to honor those who survived. If you'd like to sign the 20-foot beam, you can still do so on February 28th between 7 and 10 in the morning. The beam will be located on the north side of the hospital at 24th Street and House Avenue. Still to come, day two of the meeting between Wyoming farmers and ranchers and lawmakers, plus VP Joe Biden's candid answer on gun control. You're watching News Channel 5 News at 10 with Robert Jiha, Riley DeGood, Weather with Chris Yates, and Sports with Kurt Maddox. Coming in close to two to four inches Unless, of course, you're just south of the Wyoming state line, they'll probably struggle to reach an inch and a half. All right, now, you didn't have my hometown on there, but you had Goodland, which is about 30 Goodland's minutes away. Close. 13 inches. That's a lot of snow. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep it. <laughs> All right, it proved to be a tough night without Washington.